हेलो फ्रेंड्स माई सेल्फ प्रोफेसर सी डी कडभाने सिविल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट के के वाघ इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एजुकेशन एंड रिसर्च नाशिक महाराष्ट्र स्टेट इंडिया इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी रादर वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न डिजाइन ऑफ लैटरली रिस्टेंट बीम्स एंड वट इज मीन बाय बीम एज वेल एज क्लासिफिकेशन देन the different limit states modes of failure of beams and how to understand different modes of failure for design of beams so let us try to understand what are the lecture outlines what are the points to be covered in this lecture so first we will discuss about classification of beams limit state design of beams types of loads stability of beams modes of failure in beams bending bending local buckling shear wave bearing wave buckling lateral torsional buckling classification of sections lateral supported beam so we are going to study what do you mean by lateral supports how lateral supports are provided to lateral supported beams then plastification of beam in flexure limit state of shear combined bending and shear in beams wave buckling of beam wave crippling of beam now let us proceed further so let us try to learn uh, what do you mean by beam classification or what are the different classification of beams so basically the beams are classified as a main or primary beams or girders and second one is secondary beams or also they are called as joists so there are different names for different uh, beams as per their function as per their locations as per their load carrying capacities so beams are called as girders joists lintels purlins rafter spandrels stringers beams beams are also classified as laterally stable and laterally unstable beams now next one is permissible stress design stresses in structure at working loads are not allowed to exceed a certain proportion of the yield stress of the material stress levels are limited to elastic range means in permissible stress design uh the stress levels are limited to the elastic range only so no stress is allowed to cross the yield stress that means no plastic range is utilized in the design leads to highly conservative solution as the stress levels are limited to elastic range therefore whatever design has done designs are done by means of permissible stresses then it will lead to a highly conservative solutions now let us un- what do you mean by limit state design of beams in this method the structure has to be designed to withstand safely all loads and deformations likely to occur on it throughout its life design should ensure that the structure does not become unfit for the use for which it is required or it is intended the state at which the unfitness occurs is called a limit state so what are the different limit states first one is ultimate limit states so in ultimate limit state it includes a flexor shear bearing compression torsion lateral torsion then serviceability limit states in serviceable limit states there is deflection vibration fire and durability limit states now let us learn the different types of loads are coming on the steel structure and then they are to be transferred to the beams so one, first one is the dead loads imposed loads also called as live load crane load snow load dust load wave load earth pressures wind next one is the wind loads earthquake loads erection loads 
accidental loads they are from blast they are they may be due to blast impact of vehicles etc then secondary effects temperature effects differential settlements eccentric connections varied rigidity now let us learn about what is mean by stability of beams so from these two figures this is a figure number 1 and this is figure number 2 it is clearly visible that whenever this this load is applied on a i section girder i section beam it has been tilted so that means initially the vertical central axis of the i section is vertical but as soon as the load is applied uh, due to this load application the beam has slightly tilted out of its verticality therefore in this case stability of beams can be considered in two parts that is laterally unrestrained beams and laterally restrained beams so the the beams which are not laterally supported or laterally restrained they will not remain stable they will deviate away from its verticality at the same way or same time they may have a torsional flexural buckling so therefore here in this case the whole beam here lot in this case the whole beam is subjected to vertical deflection at the same time it has gone away from its verticality that means there is lateral torsional buckling in the beam now failure modes in beams so our first failure modes we are going to learn in this case is a bending so when you look at all these diagrams so for let us study this first diagram so here the simple supported beam is there subjected to point load here the stresses are be well below the yield stress so this beam will be behaving in the range of elastic region similarly in this case again whenever the central point load increases as we go on increasing it increases and the if the bending stress distribution diagram reaches extreme fiber stresses reaches to the yield stress again the behavior of beam will be elastic so beam remains straight when unloaded so for these two cases and two cases when the loads are increased up to a uh, elastic limit and the extreme fiber stress is reached to the yield stress but again if the loads are removed the beam will regain its original size and shape that means it will remain straight but whenever loads are again increase beyond elastic range or beyond yield stress what happens uh, there will be a plastification or you can say at this extreme fibers or yield stress is reached for this region yield stress will be reached for this region that means there is a plastic state at this point there is plastic state at this top and bottom will be subjected to plastic stresses or it will go uh, it will enter into plastic stage or plastic region therefore whenever this load which is causing the ill stress to be distributed on the top fibers and bottom fibers of the beam and when you remove this load the beam will not completely regain its original size and shape that means beam remains slightly bent when unloaded in this is again when complete fibers of the beams are carrying or reach to the yield stress that means there is complete uh, plastification of the section takes place that means this section here is a fully plastic at this point a complete plastification of section will takes place so plastic hinge will form and again if you remove uh, this load the beam will not re uh, uh, regain its it will not come to its original position or size and shape okay so when all the beam cross section has become plastic the beam fails by formation of plastic hinge at the point of maximum imposed moment the bending moment cannot be increased and the beam collapses as though a hinge has been inserted into the beam next failure mode in beam is local buckling so whenever beam is subjected to very heavy loads and due to heavy loads bending moment uh, on the beam section increases and therefore in case of i section this top flanges buckles in a in in the form of waves so therefore here this part is subjected to all this part is subjected to compression due to heavy compression at a certain location of the beam uh, 
is responsible for local buckling of the flanges or beam whereas bottom portion of the beam is subject to tension so this is nothing but a local flange buckling failure next one is a failure modes in beams that is due to shear so whenever heavy shear is acting at a particular cross section of the beam then the then the small element of the beam behave like this that means this diagonal is subjected to tension and this diagonal is subjected to compression and therefore so the particle or rectangular shape of the beam will be deflected or it will deform in the shape of rhombus during the shearing process if the wave is too thin it will fail by buckling or rippling in the shear zone as shown figure and that is called as a uh, failure due to shear next one is a failure modes in beam that is wave bearing and buckling so whenever this suppose this is a simple support beam and it is supported at this one support here above the support one bearing plate is provided or supporting plate is provided below the flange of the uh, beam that means here the load transferred through the beam or reactions transferred through the beam here is due to bearing and what is mean by buckling whenever heavy loads are acting on the beam from from top to bottom top towards downward direction then this central portion of the wave buckles in this shape it deviates away from the verticality and this is called as buckling so whenever wave crushes at this point that is a connection between wave and flange because this is sudden increase of decrease of area from flange to wave from wave to flange there is sudden increase in area there is sudden change in cross section area that's why due to heavy loads or you can say heavy loads or bending moment this may crush or it may buckle or fold so this buckling or folding actually it's a crippling so this is a crippling of wave at the junction of flange and wave is called as a wave bearing or wave crippling where this buckling of wave from this portion to this portion is nothing but a buckling so due to high vertical stresses directly over a support or under a concentrated load the beam wave may actually crush or buckle as result of these stresses next failure mode is a lateral torsional buckling we already discussed this uh, uh, lateral torsional buckling in the previous cases that if whenever any unbalanced forces or diagonally opposite forces are acting on a beam then in that case the beam does not remain in a vertical position it will be deviated from its vertical position so it will be twisted uh, outside at the same time ends may be twisted so therefore there is a lateral torsional buckling of same support beam in this case so this is lateral buckling lateral torsional buckling so whenever any if there is a chance of lateral torsional buckling of the beam so that beam may be su uh, supported laterally this point this point this point and this point so at four points this or at the support also that means these are the two points two four six eight points opposite die points the beam is uh, supported laterally and then loads are acting then you know what happens the central portion bends downward in this case this portion also bends but due to lateral support this is prevented from more uh, prevented from from buckling and this portion buckles more as compared to because it is a central part so this is beware of beam with restraint so so, so clearly uh, between these two figures uh, you will come to know that what is the effect of lateral support so due to lateral support there is no lateral uh, moment of beam and there is a less deflection of beam and therefore lateral torsional behavior of beam is prevented and beam will definitely carry more loads so again local buckling so when you compare uh, the i section used for beam section and a tubular section used for tubular section used for as a beam then uh, this flanges buckle locally or overall uh, overall buckling of the flange may occur top flange may buckle bottom flange similarly in this case tubular sections a uh, some part comes out some part is a uh, part of the tubular section how the tubular section is pushed inside so behavior is clearly identified from these two figures if you compare these two figures okay 
next so when you compare i section and a square section then in this case if this square section is tied here by means of means stiffeners in between so what happens here the width to thickness ratio and here width to thickness ratio is a different one and therefore load carrying capacity of this type of section will be eight times stronger than these sections because they are hollow sections and they are not supported at the ends they are like a cantilever they are supported at the middle only whereas this uh, vertical horizontal portions horizontal portions supported by vertical plates next design of plate elements limiting width thickness ratio to ensure yielding before plate buckling that means so there is uh, actually uh, is code have decided different classification of sections uh, and that is related to width to thickness so if for any uh, plate elements what is its width and what is thickness that ratio is very very important if that ratio is higher the plate will buckle lesser if that ratio sorry if that ratio is higher plate will buckle easily if that ratio is smaller smaller then a uh, plate will not buckle easily so this is equation for ensure yielding before plate buckling so b limited upon t less than equal to k pi square e whole divided by 12 into bracket 1 minus nu square by computer f y whole divided raised to 1 half therefore after that it should be 16 local buckling so when you look at this i section column and it is subjected to vertical heavy compression loads uh, the flange of column may buckle locally at one point it buckle that's why it's called local buckle. so as far as is 1984 is concerned the local buckling is avoided by specifying width to thickness limits hence we don't consider local buckling explicitly in 1984 code However, in IS 800-2007, limit state design, the local buckling would be the pivotal aspect for the design of structural component. Therefore, uh, the local buckling is a very very important aspect to prevent the uh, failure of the uh, component. So these are the different uh, sketches showing unstiffened or outstanding elements. So this is whatever plates are shown by white color they are outstanding elements or in this case this is a hatch plate is outstanding element this is outstanding element this is a hatch is outstanding element whereas this middle plate or vertical plate or vertical portion of t is a internal element next one similar this is internal element this is internal element this also this plate is hatch plate is internal element this is vertical in between horizontal plates this is vertical plate and vertical plates are internal elements so next is a section classification so already we have studied in the previous uh, topics that how sections are classified so there are there are basically four classification of section first is a slender one second is a semi-compact third is a compact and the most efficient is a plastic section so these are the bending stage distribution so plastic section there is complete plastification and rotation of the hinges here the extreme fiber all fibers in the beam reaches to the east stage, but there is no sufficient rotation in this case. In semi-compact section, extreme fibers are reached to the east stage, whereas the in-between fibers or fiber from this top plane to bottom in the wave are in the range of elastic. Similarly, in slender section, the top fiber stress and bottom fiber stress are well below the east stage, and their whole section fails well below the uh, elastic limit so that's why this type of section is not recommended by is so these are the description of plastic compact semi-compact and slender section we already studied this part so only thing is that what is slender cross section in which elements buckle locally even before reaching yield stress in such cases the effective sections for design shall be calculated by deducting width of the compression plate elements in excess of the semi-compact section limit. So let us try to understand uh, the classification of section by this uh, very good animation by using these containers and the water level increasing one by one so let us understand the concept of plastic section so when you 
click on this plastic section so the as load increases on the plastic section uh, the bending moment carrying capacity increases and naturally the bending moment capacity reaches to the plastic moment and after the bending moment of bending strength of the beam is reached or external load is acting on a beam in such a way that the plastic moment of the beam is reached and then it start forming hinges and then it moves down or flows down similarly in case of compact section when load increases on compact section gradually the section is reach section reaches up to the plastic moment but after that as soon as it is reached to the plastic moment then it doesn't uh, it uh, forms the hinges but there is no sufficient rotation so that type of sections are called as complex whereas in case of semi compact section when loads are increased uh, this section will not carry moment up to plastic moment why because as this is not a stronger section so this section will buckle or deform in a very large way or there is a large deformation well below the plastic moment and moment is reached only to the yield so this section carries only yield moment as soon as the section reaches yield moment or yielding moment it buckles and then fails whereas in case of slender section as we increase the load as this section is not allowed in a practice as this section is not allowed in practice so this section carries load well below the yielding load or it uh, the moment reached on this section before failure occur will be well below the yield stage so therefore here uh, whenever bending moment reaches well below the yield stage it suddenly buckles and the section fails and therefore this section is not accepted or not allowed in the design by limited method so types of beam behavior so this this is a equipment which is showing the lateral torsional buckling of a beam section so here beam is fixed beam is fixed at this end beam is fixed at this end and sufficient longer beam is taken and the loads are applied on the beam and the beam moves away from the center line laterally at the same time it rotates about its horizontal longitudinal axis and that is called as longitudinal torsional buckling similarly whenever external loads go on increasing the plastic or yield stresses reaches from top towards center from bottom towards center gradually and therefore flexural yielding of the section takes place so therefore the initial bending strain distribution diagram is a rectangular one and then the bending distribution diagram is converted into a uh, sorry initial bending distribution distribution diagram is a uh, triangular but as soon as load increases and plastic hinges are formed the plastic bending strain distribution diagram will be like this so let us study next is laterally supported beams so what is the concept of laterally supported beams so many times the steel i shaped girders are encased in a concrete slab as well as beam so this is not allowed to laterally move as well as movement downward is prevented lateral torsional buckling is prevented so this is called as a laterally supported beam similarly in case of this is a concrete section or general concrete section and below that uh, the i section girder is there so on on the top of the i section girder concrete element is provided but there is sufficient friction between them so they will act as a one composite section this is beam in friction connection with concrete similarly in case of multi story buildings and uh, if you want to have a composite deck slab in that case lightweight steel decking is provided on the top of the girders and top of the girders are connected by means of shear studs and they are passing into the uh, concrete so there when you pour the concrete on the deck slab which is having a secondary type beam shapes so due to these shear studs uh, the section will be as a composite section so here beam is with metal decking so these are all the 
uh, lateral supported beam. So let us learn what are different limit states for lateral supported beams. These are limit state of flexure, limit state of shear, limit state of bearing, limit state of serviceability. Now, uh, as we have discussed in a previous section, that whenever load on a beam or simply supported beam go on increasing, then behavior of beam will be similar to this figure number one, figure number two, figure number three, figure number four. So here, beam initially as load increases, beam initially deflect like this, then it will go down and it will deflect like this, then there will be third case and there will be fourth case. In the third case, uh, as the this portion of the beam uh, tra uh, transfers, or oh, sorry, transfers from elastic range to plastic range, so here uh, the plastification of section takes place and when full plastification of section takes place in the fourth figure hinge is formed and beam continuously rotated go or goes down continuously and therefore it flows down that's why it's called as plastification of section so this is the moment m and curvature diagram for the simply separated beam when it uh, uh, it uh, rotates in at the hinges so initially the moment curvature relation is straight up to the yield moment and after yield moment it becomes curvature and it reaches at this point as a plastic stage and after that there is a continuous rotation up to this point that means there is a continuous rotation of plastification and then afterwards what happens due to continuous deformation or continuous plastification of the section there will be a weight of strain hardening due to strain hardening the plastic moment so moment resistance capacity is gradually uh, slightly increased like this and it is shown by this upward curve. So these are the some typical shape factors for typical sections. So here for rhombus the shape factor is 2, for circular section it's 1.7, for the square section it's 1.5, again for elliptical section it's 1.27, I section 1.14. So from this diagram it is very clear that this, this shape is most ideal for the beam but uh, practical point of view this uh, for connection and manufacturing of this shape is a typical one therefore more common type of beam or more efficient beam will be rectangular, square or circular they are having uh, large or more value of shape factor so let us learn about limit state of shear so uh, as we already discussed in the previous section that when load increases initially the stress distribution diagram bending stress distribution diagram is triangular and the bending stress and neutral axis is zero whereas bending stress at top and bottom is way below the ill stress similarly when you observe the ill stress sorry uh, when you observe the shear stress distribution diagram and the maximum shear stress is at neutral axis and there is a zero shear stress at the extreme fibers but as load increases the stress at top and bottom reaches to the ill stress and thus only wave will carry the shear in this case so maximum shear is again and two tracks and again in, if the load is increased beyond yield stress some portion of wave are carrying uh, the bending stress and the shear stress carrying capacity of the wave decreases that means in this case the bending stress is shared by some portion of the waves and therefore this small portion of, or small height of the wave will carry the shear stress and therefore shear stress carrying capacity or shear load carrying capacity of the wave decreases so this is nothing but a combined bending and shearing pins so now whenever we want to prevent uh, the buckling of wave in beams in design of laterally supported beams or any type of beam if you want to prevent local buckling of beam the ratio of height of wave to the thickness of wave should be equal to or less than 67 into strain so these are the diagram showing the type of uh, small element subjected to clockwise as well as anticlockwise shears due to the unbalanced shear forces acting on the beam so this is the 
diagram in which uh, end of the beam is supported by means of a bearing plate here and this is the reaction due to heavy load transfer from the beam to the reaction this flange buckles this is called as buckling of the now whenever we want to design a beam and after a beam is designed for flexure and shear it is mandatory to check the wave buckling as well as wave crippling so let us study what is meant by wave buckling so here there is a bearing plate it may be taken between 50 mm to up to 200 mm it will depend on judgment of designer so here a bearing plate is provided so here this this is the reaction provided by means of a wall or foundation here what happens so, so this is width of bearing plate p1 and here uh, this line is drawn at 45 degree that means while transferring this reaction to the beam this length p1 plus n1 of the wave at neutral axis will be responsible to transfer this heavy reaction to the beam or beam will transfer the he heavy type of reaction from this portion to this portion therefore whenever heavy loads are transferred from large area to the less area due to that there is a possibility of buckling at the center of the beam that's why it's called as buckle here load carrying capacity of wave at a neutral axis is equal to pwb that is equal to b1 plus n1 whole multiplied by thickness of wave into fc that is a permissible compressive stress in a wave so here we have to find out slender ratio of a wave so l effective upon ry so l effective of a wave in this case waves are assumed to be fixed at the both ends the effective length of wave is taken as 0.70 and ry of a vertical small thickness wave is a smaller therefore ry in this case will be for i section ry in this case will be t upon 2 into under root 3 therefore uh, the slender ratio comes out to be approximately 2.5 into d upon t where d is the depth of the wave only next uh, check that is called as wave crippling so the wave may buckle at the center or it may buckle at the joint of wave and the flanges so this folding of wave at this joint is nothing but a wave crippling or wave crimping see so here this is a width of bearing plate b1 and this load this load or force is transfer to the root of root radius of the i section at a slope of 1s to 2.5 so in this case the crippling load or crippling load of the wave is equal to b1 plus n2 whole multiplied by thickness into fy dub so this is nothing but a wave crippling in this so, so that is about the complete discussion about the classification of beams then modes of failure of beams accordingly uh, we have to take care of the different checks so whenever beam fails in a different different fashion so while designing a beam we should take care so we should proportionate the beam we should uh, design the sizes of the beam in such a fashion that they should not fail by any modes of failure we already learned in this lecture what are different limit states uh, how to provide wave buckling checks and wave crippling checks similarly how to prevent buckling of wave by providing d by t ratio so thank you once again for listening this lecture thank you Yeah.